Asalaamu As Alaikum, welcome to the second part of the video, let's get started. So topic three is during pregnancy. And now during pregnancy, because I was like, I'm in jihad, I'm gonna do as much dua as possible, I started doing dua for righteous children and for righteousness straight from the get-go. However, I realized after a small amount of time that all the babies, because the babies can hear you, the babies know what's going on around you. If you've got a crazy environment going on, um, the baby will kind of like pick up on that. If you've got a very calm environment, the baby will pick up on that. So just make sure it's as harmonious as it can be. But anyway, I figured I'm talking to the baby all the time. I was reading Quran a lot and I was reciting and um, doing a lot of dua. So the baby could just hear my voice. So every night, me and Zahid do our nighttime prayers and our, in the morning we do our morning prayers. So at night, I thought it was a really good idea for Zahid to primarily do the nighttime prayers so that the baby could get used to him reciting. So I think that's a good way of um, having the father bond with the baby as well. When Yahya was born and Zahid was reciting, he was so calm, he was quiet as a button. We were so happy because it was kind of like Every time we said the Quran, he would calm down and be really quiet. And we were just like, this is amazing. So fasting. Um, now, I was pregnant during Ramzan. So I didn't actually fast for that Ramzan. And they say that it's beneficial for pregnant women and breastfeeding women not to fast. So Umar Suleiman says that in his video. They're treated like travelers. So you don't have to make up your prayers, but you do have to make up your fasts. And I didn't know this because I was like, oh God, I need to do them during December, but I'm going to be breastfeeding. How am I going to, because I wanted to do them when the days were shorter. So I left that. I didn't do it. I am still breastfeeding, so I'm still not keeping my fasts. However, you do need to let an ex of kin know because if anything happens to you, somebody else needs to have that responsibility and keep those fasts for you. So I've let Zahid know that he needs to keep his fasts and I reminded him of this I think it was two days ago as well and he said he forgot so now it's on camera <laughs> so he hasn't forgot and all you lovely people know that you can remind him but what I will try and do is during the winter months I will keep two fasts a week over two months I should be able to complete all the ones that I missed also don't forget to take your prenatal pills um, however a lot of prenatal pills do have gelatine in them. I took Pregnica, they had beef gelatine in, but I went onto the website and it said that they were, it was halal. Baby showers, there's nothing bad about them. However, it shouldn't be like a ritual. So not something that you do every year. Um, it's a sunnah to help new parents out, so to give presents and things like that. I personally didn't want to have a baby shower. I wanted to have something to be mixed with my hikika. I wanted a hikika party. So everybody could come over and we could have kind of like a baby shower after the baby was here just because um i'm very conscious of like nazar and things like that so i just like to have everything i just wanted to wait until baby was here healthy happy and content my lovely family and my in-laws um put together a surprise baby shower for me we all went out for afternoon tea and then everyone came back to mine uh, just for presents and things so that was really really nice and um, I had no idea and nobody can keep surprises from me so this was an absolute first and I can't believe Zahid did it to be honest he was like I'm taking you sofa shopping and we're gonna choose our sofa today so I was like in like some really crazy outfit um, that I would not wear in front of my father-in-law <laughs> and he didn't say anything he has no idea about this stuff but anyway so also I never knew that there was an order of exposing one's, one's aura in front of a medical profession, professional. So I was like, you just go to the hospital and there'll be a female doctor, a female midwife, and it'll be fine. No, there's like one, two, three, four categories. So the first one is a Muslim woman, second one is a non-Muslim woman, then it's a Muslim man, and then a non-Muslim man. I was lucky because I wanted to have a very natural birth um, so we went to a birth centre. There was only female midwives on duty. However, there wasn't any Muslims. But Alhamdulillah, I had a lovely midwife. Time of birth. At the time of birth, the when the baby comes out, it is po poked by the shaitan. And I didn't know this because I thought when a baby comes out, it comes out screaming and crying. It's poked by the shaitan. That's why it comes out crying. Maryam al Islam did a specific dua. It's in the fortress of the Muslim, I think, but you can Google it and it'll be online. But there's a specific dua that you do to protect your baby from the shaitan once it comes out. Um, I didn't read it during that time, but I did read it before. 
and alhamdulillah when Yahya came out he wasn't like screaming kicking crying he just did a little moan after a while he was absolutely fine he was just like looking around alhamdulillah he was perfect for us so yeah it is a really traumatic time for the baby as well because they're going from one realm to the other realm it's um very very difficult for them just try and do lots of duas possible i did hypnobirthing and in that i kind of incorporated a lot of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remembering that it is such a blessing to even be in that position to have a baby and to give birth take it in your stride and enjoy every moment um i live my life on taking positives out of everything so definitely try and do that during birth and it will really help you get into the right mindset so when the baby is just born um try and get your partner to do the azan in his ear so i think it's yeah so you do it in your right ear first and then you go to the left it is a weak hadith on the in the left ear however it's just to do the default so there's no harm in doing it so yeah uh, zahid did it for yahya um after a few minutes after the midwife said that he was fine they just he just took him away and did the azan and then you do a date so you get a sw something sweet if you can't find a date then something sweet but chew up a date and put it at the top of their palate um really good for their digestive system and i know a lot of people use honey honey is not good for the baby honey causes infant botulism if you give it to a baby up until 12 months so try not to give your baby honey up until they're one years old <clears throat> marie malia sam was also given date and warm water um dates to replenish her, dates to replenish her system so i had a little packet with me i don't think i actually had any um yeah i don't think zahid knew where they were in the bag um warm water i had a water birth so really really helps with pain relief so naming a baby you can name your baby anything you want just as long as it's not um relating to an, a different religion and i always thought no it needs to be an islamic name it needs to be you know if you're a convert you have to change your name like if it's mark you've got to change it to something that's not the case as long as it's not kind of relating to a different religion so like if somebody was called Christian, um, that's relating to Christianity. So one of the most important things that you can do for your baby is to choose a good name for them. So just make sure you look into it, do your research, find something with a good meaning. There's four different categories. So the first one is um, the most beloved names to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, which is Abdullah and Abdul Rahman. Zahid, oh, alhamdulillah. Zahid loved Abdullah. He really wanted to keep Abdullah. Um, the second is Ab names, and Umar Suleiman goes into detail on that, so do look into that if you're thinking of Ab names. Um, the third one is names of prophets and messengers, which are lovely. I love prophet and messenger names. Um, and the fourth one is of righteous people. Um, I love the name Shamsul Arafin. My husband hated it, but there was a guy that I knew and I thought he was a very righteous man. Um, and I really wanted my son to be called Shamsul Arafin. However, I would have been okay with Shams, but um, Zahid just was not having it. So we didn't choose that name. So the name that we did cho choose was Yahya. Now, Yahya is um, really significant for both me and Zahid. Zahid was called Yahya when he was a baby. It was like his nickname, but it came from, I think it was his sister. She's going to kill me for this, but I think his sister couldn't say his name properly. So she, she used to call him Yahya. So it just kind of like carried on from there. It was a name that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Zakaria al-Islam's son. And Yahya is in Surah Maryam. Um, and I was reading a lot of Surah Maryam during my pregnancy and i was like my name's mariam yahya's in surah mariam i'm reading surah mariam it must be a sign so yeah it was kind of like a connection for both of us and the meaning of yahya was lovely there isn't a pure meaning for it but in the quran it states that yahya was somebody who was a keeper of the book he was obedient to his parents and so on and so on and, so on. and it was so funny because my dad came over and he was like what have you decided on the baby name and we were like oh we're thinking of yahya and he was like, yuck, yuck, because my dad's very um, British. He was born in London, like quite a Londoner, but he lives in Oxford now, so his accent's not like that. I'm just making that up. But he's in a, he's um, got a very strong British accent, so he can't really say Asian words very well. So he was, oh, so he was like, yuck, yuck. Oh, yuck, yuck's quite nice. And we were like, ooh. I don't know if we 
should you keep it now? He got it in the end and yeah, yeah, yeah it was. It also states that the father's name should be the middle name and the last name should be the family name. I never knew this and when I got married I changed my name which is something that you're not supposed to do but is very common in the western world. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I do have a part three to these videos so do have a look at those. Please do like, comment and subscribe and oh yeah he is not happy and inshallah I will see you guys very soon. Assalamu